मूल्यवान तो सोने की लंका भी थी लेकिन अगर बात किसी की स्वतंत्रता की हो तो रावण का राज हो या ब्रिटिश राज दहन तो होके रहेगा Randeep um it's a big big honor and a pleasure to have you on filmishalmi.com and to discuss a very important film called Swatantra Veer Savarkar uh I mean Randeep this is amazing you're directing for the first time and uh you know you're also presenting a character which is obviously quite contested uh it's a very controversial character um so i think the questions that are displayed in the trailer and i think that society has had for years how many questions did you actually have when you you know sort of decided to pursue this i was uh, i was brought this idea as an actor and i've been a history buff all my life and i thought hey i know history and my first question was hey i don't look like mr savarkar at all and how will we manage that but besides that i was thinking what do i know about him so i only knew two two things kala pani and veer savarkar I actually did not know any detail of his life because it was never there in history books. It was never there in a public discourse. Uh, and then recently, all you hear is just, you know, false abuses thrown at him. So when I could not find anything, and I read some history books uh, which were of from a certain uh, category of of people, they all mentioned the armed revolution in one paragraph, and that was it. these yeah. these people were there also and they tried but nothing happened i said how could have nothing happened if there was thousands of these people who were hung who were jailed who were this there must be something going on yeah. so when i did a deeper research and i found out such a plethora of of uh, information about the armed revolution and the people involved in it and the contribution of mr savarkar in that i felt very miffed that uh, you know why is this not brought out why is it so and uh, that made me pursue it more and in fact a lot of people told me not to get involved in this project at all because it is going to label me from a certain party or a certain you know sang sanghi actor and all those things mm. i said but is that the reason enough to not tell his story i said no so i went about pursuing it and then since they didn't have a proper script in place and i had read so much i um, i uh, made this screenplay over three nights in fact with utkarsh nathani and uh, my point of view right from the beginning was how, why will people be interested in a biopic uh, of a man from independence struggle the kids have moved on they don't look upon independence as a something that uh, is relevant to them so i decided to make a young film mm. uh, almost like a gangster film about these guys who were in their heads all gangsters they were smuggling guns across seas they were sending bomb manuals acquired from mr lenin to india they were writing letters to the to the uh, people in the army people with all the kingdoms and 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 rajwadas and all that you have to join the revolution so there was a whole secret societies and secret things that were going on at that time which you were all unaware of mm. and that is what i tried to encapsulate and of course i deal with all the aspects of public uh, uh, dispensation these days about him so i've addressed all those things as well in the movie but i've made a nice thriller kind of a movie with a, you know there is no preaching about uh, desh bhakti and all that it is as it is and is a man's life and and the larger story we are all a a we are all a, a result of our circumstances so yeah. i carefully and truthfully created the circumstances and then mr savarkar's response to it which forms what the movie is and what all he went through i also had written about kalapani while i was writing the script and i'd seen some photographs but it's only when i landed up there i realized the horrors of imprisonment and you know inhuman uh, 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 inhuman things that were these people were put through it was brutal and that's what brought to light this colonial occupation which the british and even americans everybody glossifies over and makes them the good guys they should see this side of the story 
the british colonialism not only made roads and bridges and stuff for the exploitation of the country they also persecuted us a lot we were you know dogs and indians are not allowed in places and stuff like that mm. so uh, in terms of the colonial uh, uh, atrocities that were that were handed out to us uh, especially the the there were two the hardliners and the moder moderates so the hardliners bore the brunt of it and the moderates uh, kept uh, negotiating for uh, constitution constitution amendments and oftentimes it happened that when they killed somebody the the moderates uh, uh, things would be accepted by the british so mm. that they always kept them engaged uh, they usually sent the hardliners off away from the mainland so they do not even influence the the other inmates in the jail so it was a real isolation of the armed revolution that was done by the british and because it because we got uh, the great uh, ideology of uh, mahatma gandhi which was not which was non violence which obviously had a great part to play in our freedom struggle and through reading mr savarkar i have come to admire mr gandhi even more because he what he did and what he said were the one thing he stood by his ground and he really galvanized the common man in joining the freedom struggle through his uh, uh you know through his symbolism of lathi and dhoti and minimalism and all those things he was a great uh, uh, uh he had a great uh, sense of his word and his uh, image mm. uh, that uh, was very effectively used and him and mr savarkar also had a very uh, mutual respect for each other they both wanted the same thing which was independent united india their path to get it was different one followed right. non violence agar aapko ek gal pe thappad pade to ek dusra gal aage kar do and one followed the thought that there are only handful of these british if we start killing them they wouldn't know where to turn and they'll run away mm. so these two thoughts uh, but in the end both of them wanted a united independent india right. so but uh, though mr gandhi and indian national congress which took power once the british left uh, selected they were selected not elected to take power and obviously the history is written by the victors and uh, you know as they say the history is written by the hunter if the lion started writing the history it was like his hands were shaking his first shot went there and you know <laughs> so it's a different thing so this history that was written was i feel personally and through my research was very one sided where too much importance was given to one set of people and not at all to another set of people though they all made sacrifices and contributions right. to our freedom struggle right and i think what's also very interesting about you randeep is that you are one actor who really surrenders to the role um i remember for sarabjit uh, you lost about what 20 kgs <laughs> for the character in this i in this i lost 32 <laughs> here you lost 32 i remember even for battle of saragarhi when that which unfortunately did not happen but again you really rededicated yourself uh for the roles does that aspect of you surrendering and what really you know motivates you as an artist to really go out there so so the other one the other part of your question uh, is that hey, uh my first thing is that if you're doing a character you have to look the part that is the first thing to do and to look that part because when this movie came to me my biggest question was that i don't look like mr savarkar I'm a Haryanvi jat boy with muscles, um, and uh, you know, so I had to really uh, sculpt that out of me with the help of, of course, my makeup designer Renu Kapille helping me and all other characters in the movie. The other part is that I like to take on things that I have not done before to keep things interesting for myself as an artist. In turn. keeping my audience interested in me and not just you know ki acha pichli picture aur is picture mein same kiya tha wo kiya tha so i like to explore that it is a personal uh thing of me as an artist that i've always believed in in uh, uh 
doing things that I've never done before. It's just to keep things interesting for myself. Mm. Right. And I think also another thing that I've noticed is that a lot of the roles, I mean, not all of them, but some of the ones that I've felt like it's interesting, but a lot of the characters you've played are quite rough on the edge. They're very rough on the edge. There's a sense of them being quite misunderstood which actually makes sense as to why perhaps at this point of your career, you know, taking up a role like Rui Savakarji is perhaps a very interesting and a very natural decision as well for you. Um, When it comes to you pursuing these characters that are very misunderstood, do you feel like somewhere it comes from your personal life as well? Or is that just something that just naturally happened in your career? Well, unsung, uncelebrated, might be some things you might attach to me as uh, my journey as an actor in some ways. Similarly with Mr. Sawarkar, uh, it is just that that every human being is a complicated system of thoughts and feelings. And sometimes uh, in portraying characters, we tend to whitewash them and not dwell further. Uh, it is something I, I really felt that, you know, it was Mr. Savarkar who was guiding me in a lot of things because there was no script in place. And I wrote, co-wrote the script with Kush Naithani. And then he must have had a vision for it so that I ultimately ended up becoming the director. And he must be really testing me that I had to sell off my house to finish the movie. So I think uh, somewhere he's putting me through the hardships to, for me to go to the next level. And I'm very glad for it. All right. Well, look, on that note, thank you so much, Randeep, uh, for joining me on filmishomi.com and wishing you all the very best for the film. And uh, can't wait uh, to see to see it and to see you in action as well as a director. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. Same here. I'm very excited to share my work with people. I, I've not made a boring, preachy film about Desh Bhakti and uh, Azadi and all that. I have really made a very modern film with fast-paced thriller at times uh, to engage the younger audience. And I want them to go and see the film. And I want it to become a movement for right. not only uh, understanding Mr. Savarkar, but also bringing out of the closet thousands of other revolutionaries which are unsung and uncelebrated. And I want you to decide mm -hmm. whether he was weird or not after you've seen the movie. All right. Leave a question for you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, Randeep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.